How we doing? Fox back again for sound design tutorials. This is part three of the deconstruction of uh, my 150 BPM hard trance track using only Synthmaster. In the first two I went over two of the plucks which I did. I'll just play them quickly. If you haven't seen them it doesn't really matter. I'm doing all the sounds individually and I'm going to post a link to the track, me making the track in full at the bottom of each one. So this was the first pluck we went over. Yeah, I called that uh, an echo pluck. Pretty basic why. It's heavy on delay, heavy on the reverb. This second one, I think I'm going to call it more of an evolving pluck because I used a vector oscillator, which enables you to put four waveforms in each one of the four corners and then you can sort of spin it around as the, the pluck's progressing. That is this sound. So totally different to the first pluck, it was occupying a part lower down in the spectrum, the more mids rather than the highs, which is exactly what I wanted it to do. This is the sound we're going to be going over today, it's the lead-ish sort of sound. It's quite an airy super saw lead, it wasn't taking main stage of the track, I only used it on the brakes really. And the build up. So yeah, it wasn't a lead but still it is a super saw, but so it's quite airy because I use an ensemble effect and a reverb. But yeah, this is it. There you go, nice super saw full sound. You get all the thickness and the wideness with uh, detuning of the uh, voices and uh, some unison. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead, reset the preset. Starts you off with one basic waveform and one oscillator. I'm gonna use two oscillators for this, so I'm gonna click on both on straight away. So sawtooths on both of them. Oscillator one, I gave eight voices. I clicked it free so it was free running, um, volume or maximum, tone all the way around to the right, phase, pitch, fine and everything I kept as standard. I just detune this slightly to the left. So layer 2, I gave 8 voices, everything I kept exactly the same although I pitched this one to the right slightly, not pitch sorry, detune this one to the right slightly. Click this one on free as well. We'll go and set, add, and set the voice section up here now. I'll give it two voices of unison to make it even wider. Spread the detune voices to about 31. Cut off is like a filter in the voices. The higher you go around, uh, it's only keeping the higher aspects of the new voices. So I'll set that to about the same as the detune. And pan the new voices to about plus 46. That pushes them to the side of the audio spectrum, which makes it sound really wide. I didn't use any modulation, um, I used a tiny little bit of distortion on the filter when we turn it on and uh, a few effects but nothing in the matrix section. Anything I did was uh, alter envelope 1, I gave it a bit of attack, straighten this curve off slightly, push the sustain around to maximum which it is. Just so it wasn't so harsh coming in at the start of the notes. 
So we'll turn the filter on now. Click on this box here, filter one. Kept it on, no I didn't, I changed it to a digital. I changed it to a high pass filter. Just to get rid of any of the low end of the sound because I've got a lot going on in this group. I say that mid-ish pluck and the trance gate were quite low so I didn't want them to interfere with this in any way, shape or form. So I pulled the cut off down. So about plus 22, plus 43 hertz, just to get rid of the very low. If there was any any real low parts to the sound in there. Bit of drive on the filter just adds a tiny little bit of dirt. I always tend to straighten this curve out a bit when I'm driving this filter. It gives it a bit of a nicer sound, not too harsh. It's like an overdrive in effect, that drive, uh, the, the whole distortion section is pretty much just an overdrive. It's pre-gain and the bias, it's only really the drive knob that you need. The limiter attack decay and threshold, again I don't really tend to bother, bother with them. The limit uh, attack sets a point at where you want this to come in. If you have it on dead zero it comes in straight away. Okay, I use filter 2 as well, exactly the same as what I did for this, but the other end of the spectrum. I clicked it, turned it on, change it to filter 2. I kept this at a low pass. I pushed the slope round so it was quite steep, and I cut off all the way out to about 104, 105, just to get rid of the real hissy parts. When you use a lot of unison, a lot of voices, and a lot of detuning, you can get some real unwanted frequencies right at the high end. I normally EQ this out within Ableton, but the filters, the digital filters and the analog filters in this do a really good job, so for some reason I did it inside this. No difference whether you do it inside or outside. You probably would have ended up doing it in the mix anyway, so yeah, this is just rolling off the real hissy parts. Okay, the only two effects I used were an ensemble and then a reverb in the master. The ensemble is in effect two. I clicked it, turned it on. I gave this six voices as well. This is gonna make it instantly wider. I'll turn it off and then click it on so you can hear it. It sets the mix on full for, um, for some reason on the ensemble, the mix is on full to start with. Most of the other ones start on halfway. So I backed it off to about two o'clock. Um, the Both the mods, oh, I turned LFO2 off altogether. I didn't distort it, yeah I did, I distorted it. I turned it on. Probably doesn't need the distortion at all actually. You can do it to taste, you can mess around with this curve, do what you want. Distortion on the ensemble is a bit harsh sometimes. So yeah, apart from that, the only other effects I used in the master section was just a reverb. This is what gives it an even wider feel. Click it, turn it on, so the mix starts dead centre on this. The size I boosted around to about 30, that's the room size. The time I kept is dead centre. And the distance is like the decay. I boosted it to about plus 26. So quite a large reverb. So density, mod speed, mod amount and damping I didn't touch. I always EQ my reverb to get rid of the lows. You don't want to be reverbing the lows of any sound really. Even if I use an, an Ableton stock reverb, I always do the low. You've got a in filter and an out filter and that and always cut the lows off for that. Late EQ, I just boosted this point around a thousand hertz.
I really, really do like the reverb inside this synth master. It's awesome. It's uh, ten times better than anything that's got the the reverb that is in Ableton. I might, because you've got synth master, you can use synth master as an effects generator on its own. So you can, if you go to synth master, you got synth master to effects. I think I'm going to set this up as a reverb in my template. You can like save your template whenever you open up a set certain things come on. I think I'm going to have this as my go-to reverb for my send because it's so crisp and so clear. You've got so much control over what you do. This dense, The density and the damping, they are really, really good controls to use. Actually, I did pull the damping down on this one a little bit. Damping in effect, it's like quashing... I, I think it's like quashing the real high aspects of it. Somebody explained it to me once. It's like putting carpets on the walls in the room. <laughs> the more damping you've got, the, the more you pull this down, the less high ends of the reverb you're going to hear. I had it on about plus 5,000 hertz. So yeah, that's it, the sound done. I'll play it with the group as a whole, quick. So yeah, lovely, airy, super sort, and that's what I'm going to call it, an airy, super sort lead. And the next one we're going to be going over is the next one down the group, which is this pad. This is something different again. I've used Oscillator 1. I've used just a classic sawtooth, two voices, unison, and a bit of the tune just to give us the bed of the sound. And Oscillator 2, I've used a wave scanning oscillator. This lets you pop waveforms in each one of these boxes. You can have as many as you want, up to 16. I've only used four for this. And when I'm using pads, I always like to use classic waveforms because I think they're the most pure and less harsh. Um, especially with this, because I've got a lot of pingy zingy elements with the plucks and the super saw. I wanted the pad to be nice and mellow so I've used what have I used? I've used a sine, a triangle, a square and a sawtooth. All four basic waveforms. I've set an LFO to cycle through that to give the pad some movement. Quite a bit of chorus, ensemble reverb and a delay but yeah that'll be the next one anyway but for now make sure you check out my facebook and google plus page sound design tutorials if you've enjoyed this or any of my other tutorials please make sure you subscribe up here in the corner any questions about synth master any requests requests about any of the other synths that i use best thing to do is hit me up on twitter it's at sound design touch okay i'll see you for the next one in this pad i will put a link in the description to this to the full track workout that I did so you can see how I made it from start to finish. Okay, as always, thanks for watching. Cheers.